Happy Thanksgiving to those of you in the U.S. who celebrate Thanksgiving, to the U.S. in the rest of the world. Happy Thursday, unless you're in a place in the world where it's not Thursday, or you're watching this at a future date. I hope you're having a good day. Anyway, um, so the Raspberry Pi people just announced that they've created a new Raspberry Pi called the Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's a $5 computer. Now, I would say probably about six months ago, there was a Kickstarter program for the chip computer, which was the world's first $9 computer, which I've pre-ordered two of, and I'm looking forward to greatly. Um, should be getting it in the next four months or so. Uh, so I'm waiting patiently. Now, I want to talk about it a little bit, and I want to hear what you guys have to think, because there are some differences. So one's a $5 computer, one's a $9 computer. Of course, you're going to go for the $5 computer. Well, uh, depends where the specs. Well, I think they're both one megahertz processors, and they both have a half a gig of RAM. But what else is different about them? What are the pros and cons? Now, again, this announcement about the Raspberry Pi Zero just came out today, I believe. I just heard about it this morning. And um, it has some great things, but I think it also is lacking some things, but it all depends on what your project is. Now, I've said, and I've, uh, I think the Raspberry Pi is a great, great thing, but my issues with the past one is that it didn't have Wi-Fi built in. It only had an Ethernet plug. And in today's world, it's like, how often, first of all, you do need, I feel like you need an internet connection for pretty much anything you do with a computer nowadays. And Wi-Fi just seems essential, especially for a small device that you're probably going to be moving around. Although, again, it depends on what you're using it for. So let's just talk real quick about the pros and cons of the two. So, you know, in my mind, little computers like this are good for two main things. Media centers, hooking them to the TV to play videos and music and then also controlling devices. I just finished a series on home automation and uh, you know, controlling your air conditioner unit, controlling lights, um, controlling your garage door, controlling the locks on your car. Now I didn't go over all that in my series. I have done pretty much all that stuff here at my house. And it's fun and it's, it's just fun to do. My issue with the previous Raspberry Pis was the cost. Now $25 doesn't sound like a lot, but at least when it first came out, when I bought mine, which I have four Raspberry Pis, it was $25, and then get one shipped to the US was $10 for shipping. Plus you need an SD card, uh, you need um, a power supply for it, and a case, and then a Wi-Fi dongle if you wanted Wi-Fi. And if you didn't already have all that stuff, which a lot of stuff you may have, like I already have two or three Wi-Fi USB dongles lying around, um, if you didn't have all that, it really brings the cost of the computer up to like $50 to $75, which is still pretty cheap, but not when you're just going to stick it on the wall to control your, your air conditioning unit, even though, you know, if you were to buy a smart plug, it's going to cost you like, or a smart thermostat, it's going to cost you like $200, bucks. so it's still a good deal, but in my mind, it's still expensive. Uh, basically, I like to see projects under $20 for whatever it is I'm working on. So both these options are good for that, um, for that when it comes to the price, but I feel like one might be better for one thing and then the other. Now, the Raspberry Pi Zero has HDMI out, where the chip computer only has uh, composite out, uh, RCA connections, so it's more of a, it isn't HD and it's going to older TVs. Uh, you can buy an HMID adapter, which is $15. Uh, so if you're going to use this media center, that might be worth it. Still bring it below the cost of the old Raspberry Pi, um, but not the new Raspberry Pi. But even if you're using the new Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi Zero, as a media center, at what point are you not going to want to stream video? And how are you going to get, you're going to, you're going to unplug that or you plug in a USB flash drive every time you want to watch a video? Most TVs do that nowadays anyway. So you'll have to connect the Raspberry Pi Zero to the network, and not only does it not have Wi-Fi, I don't believe it has any type of network device built into it. So you're going to have to buy something. And even a really cheap USB Wi-Fi dongle, like I said, I have a few of them, even a cheap one's usually nine or $10. So now the cost of that computer has now gone up to $15. And again, I don't even know what the shipping is on the Raspberry Pi Zero, so I'm just gonna take shipping out of the equation for, for both products at this point. So $15, well, that's still cheaper than buying the $9 computer and then spending another $15 on a board to get HDMI, if you want that HDMI. Again, if you have an older TV, you might want the composite out, which is a good thing. Like, for the last three years, I've had a, or a TV at work that I've had a Raspberry Pi hooked up to, and it was an older TV that I needed the RCA connections to. Um, 
but I just bought a new TV for there and now I have HDMI so with the newer computers the Raspberry Pi Zero would be a better option even with buying the Wi-Fi adapter but like I said when I think of these little computers I mainly think about being able to throw them someplace to control lights air conditioning units locks on cars and things of that nature and again um, I don't need HDMI out for that. I, most of the time I use a Raspberry Pi when other than a media center for my TV, I use it as a server. I don't have it hooked to any type of monitor. I SSH into it or use a web interface to it. In which case, the chip, the $9 computer, already has four gigs built in of storage, which the Raspberry Pi Zero still is using SD card, which is nice because you can expand it, where with the chip computer, you'd have to expand using the single USB plug using up that USB plug unless you're going to get a uh, USB hub which again is adding the price and power consumption now uh, but the chip computer not only has four gigs built in which is plenty for uh, doing most of the I'm um, way more than enough to control a device uh, as that I was talking about as far as home automation goes but it also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in now to get four gigs of storage Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi Zero, you're adding uh, quite a bit to the price. And it may not seem like a whole lot, but when you have a $5 computer and now your peripherals are costing you three, four, five times as much as the computer itself, it's kind of like, ah. Uh. So again, these are my thoughts. I think they're both great sounding products. I haven't tried either of them yet. Uh, I look forward to trying them both. Again, I'm still waiting on my pre-order of the chip computer, and who knows if it's going to be, it might turn out to be complete crap hardware when you get it. No one knows yet. Well, a few people know. I think they've shipped it out to some developers. But as far as their demos online, they're playing Quake on it. And if you can play Quake, um, you can do pretty much anything I would do with these mini computers. So I want to hear what you have to say, what your thoughts on. Again, it's kind of early, but comment below. Tell me what your project is and which one of the products you think is better for your project and why. And if you're not working on a project, what are your thoughts just in general? Comment below. Again, Raspberry Pi's company has been while for, around for a while. They've been known to have pretty good hardware. Uh, they've been reliable. They've put out a lot of good products. We know they're good. The chip computer sounds great, but we don't know really if it's going to be good or not yet. Um, but for me, uh, majority of my projects, I think the chip computer would be better just because it has that Wi-Fi built in with the four gigs of storage. It's ready to go. Yeah, I still need to USB power it, but I have plenty of USB cables lying around and that's a minimal cost, uh, which you would have to spend on both of the products to, to get up and running. And uh, so yeah, comment below. I can't wait to hear what you guys say. Again, uh, I'm not saying one's better than the other, I'm just saying that one might be better for certain projects. So go ahead, comment below. I'll try to reply uh, uh, when I can to, to many of the comments. And I thank you for watching. Again, oh, I also forgot to mention, if you uh, have kept up to date, kept up to date on what's going on today with the Raspberry Pi Zero. Not only is it $5, but the Raspberry Pi uh, um, people put out a magazine called Pi Mag, I believe, and um, you can buy it in many bookstores, and the December issue actually comes with the Raspberry Pi Zero as a free gift. Blows my mind, not only that we live in a world where you can buy a full-blown computer, pretty much, for $5, but you can get one free just for buying a magazine. Could you imagine going back in time five years, 10 years, 20 years ago and saying, yeah, you buy this magazine, you get a free computer. <laughs> I mean, people would be like, how much is that magazine, you know? So it's great. Again, it's Thanksgiving here right now in the US. Tomorrow's Black Friday. I'm avoiding all stores for today and tomorrow. I'm sure these magazines are going to fly off the shelf at the places they sell them, so I don't know if I'm going to get one, but probably Saturday I'll probably try to go out to a bookstore and see if they have any available. But again, let me know what you think. If you ended up going and buying one of these magazines and you have the Raspberry Pi Zero, let me know how it works for you. Um, I'm sure it works great just like the other Raspberry Pis, but again, thanks for watching. Comment below. Like this video, uh, share this video so we can see as, get as many people's opinion as we can. So more people who watch the video, more people can comment and we can all get different views, maybe different ideas. Maybe someone will comment something on a project 
you hadn't thought of yet that maybe you'd want to do, or maybe I want to do, and I'll do a video on in the future. I'm really looking forward to getting both computers in the future and doing tutorials on it. So again, thanks for watching. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Check out the link in the description. And as always, have a great day. Oh, that's too sunny.